बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत दिस इज भारत एफ एम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत ये है भारत एफ एम का भारत झूमेगा भारत गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स नमस्ते Uh, I just want to welcome uh, each and everyone across the globe. I know there are audience uh, watching today from India, Pakistan, Nepal, USA, Canada, and many other countries. But first and foremost, uh, before I start, I would like to thank uh, Manan Rahul, the founder of Bharat FM, for collaborating with Eyes Open International. And I would like to introduce and welcome our inspiring couples from all across the world. and first and foremost i would like to welcome lee and sherry rikan back uh, from um, uh, ohio so rick can you just uh, tell the audience something about yourself and sherry can share something about herself from where you are thank you yes i'm lee rickenbach and uh i first met sherry when i was in college and uh we started dating and then uh we've been married now for 45 years and so it's a real joy to be with you today and i know that uh what has transformed in our life and can also be transforming in your life fantastic and uh we have another amazing couple from india uh from baroda and that's uh, rakesh shah and sangeeta shah so rakesh can you just brief our audience globally uh about yourself thank you you're on mute you're on mute you're on mute namaste jai shri krishna jai shri krishna i am i am rakesh from baroda uh, uh, my wife sangeeta has joined me uh, i am from baroda basically i am from uh, the halsarwas that is my native place uh it is in it is in kerala district uh, gujarat india thank you and our most amazing charming and gorgeous couple mark kidman and rosanna kidman <laughs> evergreen please uh you are welcome to the show and please share to our audience about yourself thank you hi i'm uh, mark kidman and uh, the gorgeous part comes from her <laughs> not me <laughs> but uh uh we pastor a church here in United States in Kentucky the state of Kentucky and we're just so pleased and honored to be with all of you guys tuning in watching and uh, we're just going to have a great time today we've been married 32 years and we met uh at a restaurant i used to manage a restaurant and this beautiful girl came in i thought was just a customer and i was teasing with some of the guys i'm like hey see that beautiful girl i said i'm going to get a date out of her well I did turned into a marriage and uh it's been it's been 32 wonderful years and uh I couldn't be more happy. Thank you very much uh, Mark and Rosanna Kinman uh friends and audience uh, all across the globe uh before this is going to be a very in- interesting inspiring intelligent and informative uh session on wedding and we always I always say that uh, wedding is happiness and marriage is freedom and when we say this it is proved here by not only this three couples here but by many c- couples across the world but having said that we always would like to start on a very good note with a good prayer for all the couples who are i think getting married today and maybe today it might be somebody's anniversary day for us all of us i think for us every day is a wedding day but during this pandemic a lot of people have lost their husbands wife loved ones and we deeply respect each and every individual has gone through this i would request uh, pastor mark kinman to bless all the couples and say some very powerful words of healing to all our audience uh, globally over to you pastor mark thank you well we all know marriage is a journey and life is a journey as well and we go through many many things in life and especially in marriage but right now we've as a world as a globe we've been going through a lot of tough times and i know india in particular is, is experiencing a really hard time with the covid-19 
uh, virus. So I want to bring a, a blessing, a prayer, not over just the marriages that we're going to be speaking about uh, today and the future weddings and those going to be getting married, but also just overall uh, our health and our well-being as a world. There's only one race, the human race, and God is the creator of all. So let's just go before God, our creator, with a prayer of blessings. Heavenly Father, our Father in heaven, you're the creator of all. You're the one who created and instituted marriage that we're here to celebrate today. And God, we just speak blessings over all of the marriages and all those young couples who are thinking, should I or should I not get married? We want to honor you today. We want to speak blessings over all of our nations represented here today, health. And we just speak peace to all of those who have lost loved ones, all of those who are struggling in many, many ways. Father, you help us get through these things. You're the God of hope. You're the God of love. Nothing in this world is guaranteed. We see that. We see that all the time. But you are faithful and you remain. And thankfully, your love and your hope and your faithfulness remains. So we honor you today and we speak blessings over all the wonderful couples that are sharing in and joining in with us today. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Mark. So friends, let's begin the show in a very vibrant way. Uh, but before I start the show, I re we respect every individual who have decided not to get married. We respect every individual human beings who have got divorced for whatever reasons, on personal note. So we have no ill feelings for anyone. We are not, not here to judge anybody. So I know a lot of people have arranged marriages. But I'm going to start with Lee and Sherry first. You know, uh, that can you share exact to our audience? Was it love marriage? Was it an arranged marriage of yours? At what age you got married? How many years you are married? So can you share with the audience and what inspired you to get married? And what <laughs> and just being so happy here you said like 46 years. So can you tell us which year you got married? Thank you. Well, I was a broken young woman <laughs> because I was broken inside. What I didn't know was that God was going to change and he was going to make me Kintsugi. And he was going to use this man to make me Kintsugi because the broken pieces of my life was because of childhood sexual abuse. And I was trafficked. I was trafficked by family. And my husband did not know this secret for 19 years. And he still loved me. And then when I told him after 19 years, from 20 years old, add 19 years, I was almost 40. That's when I told him my backstory and he still loved me and he helped me. And I thank God that he brought him into my life. And now I'll let him continue. That's amazing. <laughs> well, we uh, first met, as I said before, in college and uh, we were 19 years old and I was uh, going to be going into my senior year. We started dating basically in the fall of 74 and uh, or the fall of 73 uh, and then we saw one another at christmas of 1974 then from there it was till june that i saw her again she was in another state far away from where i was going to college and she did not continue into her sophomore year so uh we dated uh, for a while, and then uh, we're engaged for about a year, and in that last year of engagement, then we saw one another not too many times. So it was not an arranged marriage. It was something that our both of our families were agreed to, uh, but it was a, a marriage of distance. So uh, lots of phone calls, and uh, then we uh, joined our hearts in June of 1975. And from there, we've traveled really all around North America uh, doing uh, different types of educational ministries. And our last 20 years basically was spent in Central America with bilingual education. So uh, this has been a, a wonderful journey for us, but it's been a rocky rocky journey we almost broke up uh it was very difficult i had a physical break emotional break and uh, she stood with me and that was then a time of 
of real trauma in her life. And so she's gone through her trauma that I wasn't aware of till I was ni uh, 19 years into marriage, which was about 1994. And then I went through my break. And uh, that was just, uh, you know, just a short time before that. So one thing precipitated another. But we have found that the grace of God is sufficient in the deepest valley. So we are very grateful to uh, honor him today as he has honored us with 45 years. And uh, it again, it's been transforming. But it started with me. It has to start with you personally, individually. You can't change the other person. <laughs> you have to change yourself and then honor who the other person is. And that's what I had to quit expecting my husband to fix me. I wanted him to take all the broken and make it really nice for me. Mm -hmm. But then I realized, no, I have to fix my own self. I have to allow God to bring everything together and bring it back into alignment with who he created me to be. Mm -hmm. And when I started doing that and I quit saying, I don't like you. Yeah. I don't like what you're doing to me. Mm -hmm. I don't like how you're making me feel. Mm -hmm. I had to change my mindset. I had to say, no, I have to change my mind and let God change all this within me first, make no demands on him. And when I quit making demands on him, he started fixing himself. And then we started coming together. Mm -hmm. And I have to say again, God could take any broken I can't yeah, get yeah, Sherry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and he brings us together and makes everything beautiful again in his own time. Yes. Yeah, you're done a wonderful. Uh, you're a wonderful couple. You are so inspiring, and we'll come back to you. I think you got a very deep and powerful story. You said I was broken, and Ian, like you all fixed each other's trauma, like what uh, Lee said. Uh, I will come back to you, and we'll talk more about with our audience, like you know going through all these hurdles and uh, during your married life you know, at the age of 19 and after 20 years. So stay tuned. We'll be back to you. We would like to go to Rakesh Shah and Sangeeta Shah to tell us, like, was your marriage a love marriage? Was it an arranged marriage? Was it a forced marriage? And where did you get married? I know that your story is also very inspiring, but the world needs to know how you started your journey. Thank you. Our marriage is arranged, converted into love. Uh, I got married when I was 26 and my wife was 20. We are from same village. My house and her house is hardly 400 meters away. We didn't meet each other before we got married, before we got engaged. Her cousin brother and I were studying together on the same bench, but we, we, we never met each other. In 1980, I went to Mumbai uh, for my further studies, my expertising in tailoring profession. I came back into Vadodara in the 1984, and I, set, I decided to get settled in Vadodara, and uh, uh, we got married in 89. That was absolutely arranged marriage. My our parents uh, uh, arranged the uh, our marriage, and uh, we are happily married since thirty two years. But Rakesh, can you share? I remember you telling that you saw five. You see, was a sixth girl. Before that, you saw five girls, and all the five yes. girls. You are a tailor, and please tell yes, 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 yes. This is very interesting. See, I see. I am from Shah community. In, in Gujarat, uh, Shah community is different community where tailoring profession, custom tailoring profession is considered to be the lower profession. Hmm. I, I decided, uh, I, I chose this profession because it was my passion. So my first question to the girl when, uh, when I went to see the, they came to me or I went to them. My first question was that I am into tailoring profession. Are you convinced with my profession? I earn money very honestly and doing hard work. All five girls denied, no, we are not convinced with this profession and we will not say uh, anyone that you are into this profession. 
and sangeeta is a girl was a girl who told me nothing wrong earning money by doing hard work and uh, paying honesty and that that the day and that moment we decided to get married I, and i i felt in love with her <laughs> so thank and, you very much sir rakesh bhai i really appreciate that and sangeeta ben we all respect you we admire you at that time i'm talking like 32 years back that time there was such a like a stigma people say oh you're getting married to a tailor and that time you yeah. took such a wise decision and today you're blessed i can see your husband is into designing see wet tailoring has taken him to and full credit mm-hmm. goes to you sangeeta obviously to rakesh bhai so thank you very much thank you thank you thank you so coming to mark and rosana kinman i didn't know that you had met in a restaurant come on i didn't know that you were working in a restaurant <laughs> <laughs> this is something i kept you know today you got a lot of hidden secrets mark and rosara please share with our audience today globally thank you all right well uh good to be uh with everybody and hearing in everybody's interesting unique stories um we you could say we come from an arranged marriage <laughs> we say that god arranged this marriage oh i like that and, uh, yes we we fell in love but um i'll, I'll tell you and i'm going to let rosana share this our our families didn't come from the same backgrounds very different religious backgrounds and for they didn't come to our wedding and she was rejected by her family and it hurt for for 3 years we were only 20 years old when we got married so we were just a couple of kids and she was rejected by her family and for 3 years we did not even see them and uh she cried a lot you know and that was kind of hard it was stressful but yeah we got married when did we get married what year 88 that's good she remembered that <laughs> so go ahead oh um uh, well my brother was working at this restaurant and mark was the manager there on the night shift and i went to pick him up one night and cuz we were sharing a car and when i walked in he came forward and something happened it was like it was literally love at first sight it was we looked at each other and something just clicked and um uh, then he began to train me because he didn't know i was going to work there and so when i came back to work he found out oh you know the guy who i've been training her her brother i'm going to train her now and so we began kind of flirting with each other in the restaurant you know and i've been training her ever since <laughs> yeah. yeah now the truth is i trained her in the restaurant industry and she's been training me now for 32 years <laughs> this well, is anyway, one yeah. of our first dates was he brought me to church yeah wow yeah so right away i absolutely loved it it was different from mine um people were free they were free to praise the lord and it was it was very different so and and that really kind of began the wedge or the difference in our between our families because of of religion that's all since changed but at that time um it it, it was it was a dividing point and i'm not a bad guy <laughs> but uh they they rejected her because of me and uh in that that they loved him in the beginning until they found out he had a different belief system yeah. but we uh we got married we had zero money well we had 13 dollars yeah. when we got married 13 yeah 13 dollars i don't know how many rupees that is but it's not a lot <laughs> and it was a lot less back then let's put it that way but we uh we persevered we worked hard um there were many 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 challenges uh financially and time and and all the all the stresses of a marriage and but you know what we god helped us get through it we okay. had a a decision to make and a commitment to follow you can make a decision but it takes a commitment to follow through a decision changes nothing it's just the beginning and it was really a commitment and uh a purpose to persevere you know right now in the world we're seeing a lot of changes but you have to understand it's all temporary you know this pandemic that's that's really hard right now it's it'll be over we will get through it it'll be some heartache it'll be some tough times but marriage lasts longer than that marriage has always lasted longer than the previous bad experience or the previous good experience it's always looking forward going forward no matter what 
I think your uh, every your uh, story is very inspiring. And you said you had only one, three friends, only thirteen dollars when they started. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> number one, number two, her parents didn't come for three years. Understand the emotions, feelings, and sentiments, and how that gap has been bridged by Mark. So how you can bridge that gap? But having said that, uh, my next point it just came to my mind that all these three couples you all are here today on this panel, and people are watching you globally across the world, is that. During the wedding, you all three were poor starters, but during a married life, you have been a strong finisher, and you are still not you are not going to finish. But what I have seen today, many weddings weddings today are exorbitant, or very strong, or very lively. They have destination weddings. They spend millions of dollars. And in your case, it was totally different. So I would like you all to. I don't know who wants to go first and start that. You know. Like you, how you started and where you are today, and how you reached this with all the hurdles. It's not that you had a cakewalk. There were a lot of potholes. There were a lot of bumpers. And how did you all overcome all the obstacles into opportunities and happiness? Anyone can start first. I want each one of you to talk on this subject. Yes, yes, Rakesh Bhai. <clears throat> when when I I came back in Vadodara from Mumbai on 27 July 1987. Wow. And I started my first job. Uh, a reputed tailor. I I don't want to give their name uh, because this is this is global telecast. But I started with 800 rupees per month. You work for 30 days and you get only 800 rupees. One one dollar is 80 rupees. Mark, I I must say, <laughs> one dollar is 80 rupees. <laughs> so uh, I I I got my first salary that was 800 rupees on my hand. I was I was flying in sky. I had no, I had no transportation. I had no vehicle of my own. I bought my first bicycle uh, to travel, and, and I was, I was in the sky. So I worked there for nine months. I, I, I used to work there for more than twelve hours. I, I requested my boss to, to take care of my salary and to increase it, because eight hundred rupees was not enough in those days. He did not pay any attention, and and after some days, uh, uh, I I requested him again. He, he 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 didn't care about it. So I decided to give, give to leave from that place and to find another job where I can get more money because money is very important thing in in this uh, time. In, in any time, money is important. So I I I went. See, I was working with the biggest shop in Baroda. Now I decided to go to the best shop in Baroda. That I would like to give the name of that shop is Modern Stores in Vadodara. Was a reputed tailor in Vadodara. So uh, I uh, they offered me one thousand rupees, two hundred rupees extra. I was so happy that time. And after eight months, I said, "Boss, I am I am leaving your shop after thirty days from now. I am giving you the notice." Then after fifteen days, he called me and he offered me whatever I want. We can provide you a home. We can we can give you a scooter uh, uh, filled with petrol and salary, whatever you say. I said no, sir. This is done. I have come. I am committed to some other place. I will have to go there from first of May. So 30th April 19 eight nineteen ninety was my last day there, and first of May I joined. I joined Modern Stores. So uh, I joined Modern Stores. Then I worked for uh, uh, five months, but one thousand rupees was also not enough for me. Then I decided to do something uh, different than, uh, uh, like uh, I must start my own business. Then I went to one store and I offered them that I am a tailor and I have got my own skill. You are a, you are selling clothes, and you don't have any tailor. So kindly spare me some space where I can stand and take my customers' measurement. They said they said you will you I will provide you will provide you the place, and for that you will have to pay some rent. I I agreed, and from there I started my career, and that that was the first step of my career. I started. They, there I worked for one year, and then I found I can I can do it on my own now, 
and I started my first shop in 19, uh, 1986, 1986 uh, and it was only 80 square feet area, 80, 80 square feet area where I had to work. Slowly, 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 after two years, my, I, 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 I got more than 3,000 customers. And my pocket was full of money. So That's my parents, so my parents said, Rakesh, you are all alone now and you have to work very hard. You are working, you are a hard working boy. And now we, we think you are settled now. So we need to find a good and beautiful girl like Sangeeta and you get married now. So I, so the, uh, my, uh, my own shop, I started in 1986 and today is 2021. That is more than uh, 37 years. Congratulations. 32 years, 32 years. After working uh, at my 80 square feet area shop for 15 years, I, I decided to uh, buy my own shop. That is 400 square feet area in premium area of Baroda, that is Alkapuri. And uh, till today, I'm working there. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Rakesh Bhai. It's really inspiring. And he's got his own uh, designer showroom, I would say, in shape. And today, you see all the fabrics I wear. He's designed that for me. I'll be very honest. And he's not taken a single penny. So I, I love you. I respect you. <laughs> I admire you. you. Thank you for yeah. supporting Russia. But uh, uh, Mark and Lee, I just want to take one question from uh, Purobi Roy. She's from India and she's asking a question. So I'm going to take some questions from the audience. Is that what is that made you stay together, not give up on each other as a couple? What are some tips that you will suggest young couples for a long married life full of love? Mark, can you share something to this young lady, Purobi Roy Dave from, I think, India? Purobi, uh, that is a great question. A lot of different uh, answers I could give, but uh, I think one very important answer that I would give to that would be to realize that in a relationship, it's kind of a deal. It's kind of a partnership, and you have to look at it that way because the warm and the fuzzies at some point, the warm and the fuzzies is like, oh, I don't care whatever happens in the world. You know, I love this person. But at some point you have to be responsible in your relationship and the warm and the fuzzies won't carry you where you need to go because there will be disagreements, right? You know, these, these couples that say, oh, we never disagree. Somebody's lying, okay? <laughs> Somebody's not telling the truth, right? There are two people not alike in this whole world. I don't care who you are. There's going to be a disagreement. So you have the purpose to come to an agreement. We can disagree, but we can come to an agreement. And that, a lot of times that's a compromise. And I think people forget that. I, we're all right. We know we're right all the time. But guess what? You have another partner and we have to, even though we disagree, we can come to an agreement. And if you purpose to every time, you will. Thank you. And th that's a very good uh, answer to Purobi Roy. And Purobi Roy, thank you for asking this uh, uh, question. And we want uh, Lee and uh, Sherry to answer this question from Pakistan. It's Bilal Ahmed. And uh, he says, and I think he's again telling Mark also, Mark, what's the right age to get married? Well, so anyone wants to answer that? <laughs> well, we we were 20 years old yeah. when we got married. Now that's kind of young, you know, for America. Uh, and in America, everybody wants everything perfect, everything set in place before you get married. We, as I as I was telling, you know, Rakesh was relating. We had thirteen dollars. Uh, I was in school. We were in school the night before my wedding. I'm studying for finals, and you know, I'm it, it's just craziness. And you know, I'm working around the the apartment that we were renting, trying to get ahead. And everybody was telling me I was crazy for getting married so young. But I love this girl, and I I saw the future with her, and I decided that my future for the rest of my life was with her. I don't think there's an age. We could have been 18 or 19. But let me tell you, as we get older, we do mature, and with the more maturity, you make wiser decisions. 
give yourself lots of options. The more options you have, the better decisions you'll be able to make. We just worked hard. I can really identify with Rakesh's situation because I started a business. I was realizing that we were struggling financially the first few couple of years of our marriage. We would we would eat macaroni and cheese. If you know what that is, <laughs> Americans eat a lot of it and it's cheap, right? <laughs> and it's so cheap, we didn't have enough money. We had to wait till it was on sale, four boxes for $1. And then we would buy like 20 of them for our $5 and we would save up and we would eat that and go to school. And then on Friday, we would splurge. You know what we would do to splurge? That means to just spend a little bit frivolous extra dollars. We would add tuna or ground beef to the mac and cheese. That was our splurge night on Friday night. But purpose, persevere, to get ahead, to work hard, we realize that money, lack of it, is a stress on marriages. And you need to do whatever you can do to eliminate any stress. And money's a big one. So you either have to live less or make more. And I realized that I needed to make more. And I started a business, very, very small, bought one product, sold it to some people, bought some more, sold it. And uh, anyway, 27 years of business, uh, I had stores and, and delivery routes and, and we, we changed a lot of things and, and we use that money to do a lot of good work in our communities. So thank you very much, uh, Mark, but we have got a lot of uh, messages or comments like from, we have Chetna from Nepal and somebody from Cambodia, none. But anyway, I just want to, uh, we'll be covering those points also, uh, but coming down to the next, uh, because we are very sh short of time. I want to ask Lee and Sherry, and then others can also tune in about kids. Many times people, they said like, you know, getting married and then having, oh, we don't have kids. But uh, what is your personal feeling on having kids? I want each one of you address on, on having children. And at what age did you have the kids, your first child? And how many kids you have? And how old are they now? Thank you. Well, we decided right away that we wanted to start a family. So we didn't wait. And I think Mark has a really excellent point. You have to remember your options. Uh, we were always in some kind of a ministry. So uh, I guess we're in good company today because my first job was teaching was $25 a month. And then I got $75 a month. And then I got a raise after seven years to $150 a month. But you have to remember, everything was supplied. We weren't renting anywhere. We had, we actually could eat several meals at a, a dining hall there at that school campus. So we had a lot of things provided. But whenever you have children, which we had three by the time we left our first ministry, our first uh, job down in New Mexico, uh, I figured I was going to have to pay for uh, maybe a, maybe I'd get a, an arm paid for, a leg of my first baby paid for, or my third baby, excuse me, by the time uh, we, maybe in 10 years. I mean, it was very expensive because they all had problems. But we left and that school job with all of our children paid for. So we had, uh, we had three there in our first seven years, and then we had another child down in Guatemala. So we have four children, and our oldest is 45, uh, we'll be here in just a few days. And then uh, 40, what is it, 43, 45, 43, 40, and 38. Yeah. So, Sherry's just, yeah, nine <laughs> years apart from the youngest to the oldest. And I don't know, we were really happy to have our children fairly close together because they could have someone to play with, someone to enjoy. And in our kind of work, um, they just, you know, we, we just uh, enjoyed being a family together wherever we went. So we started a family early. Uh, the only regrets I have today is that I, I should, I wish I would have waited and allowed my wife to finish college. Uh, she's a great learner. She's probably learned more in the last number of years to give herself a degree. If I could get an honorary degree for her, I sure would. <laughs> But uh, that is one thing that I think would have been very, very helpful for her to finish college before we started the family. But we're very happy all of our children uh, have children except our daughter and uh, who is not married. But uh, 
we appreciate that privilege of starting our family young. And when you become grandparents, you get to enjoy them more. You're not as old. <laughs> so it's, it's a great, uh, it's a kind of a win-win. Thank you very much, uh, Lee and Sherry. You are a very inspiring and young couple. But before I move to Rakesh uh, Sangeeta Shah, I just want to share a lot of compliments, you know, like uh, uh, Luella Menezes Mascarenhas from India, I think Pune, she said, lovely show. Chetna Shristi from uh, Nepal, well, that's awesome. And uh, Kevin Patel, I think he's from Gujarat. Hello, everyone. All are looking nice together. So there are a lot of compliments and people said, so somebody said from Kishore Parekh, great conversation, really inspiring to all. So all this, you know, you're doing an amazing job. So, but now coming to Rakesh uh, uh, Shah and Sangeeta Shah, that in India, I know it's always, uh, I would not say, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't put it, uh, I don't, I would, I'm just trying to use the appropriate word to respect. You have two daughters. Yes. People want kids, like boys. That's the culture. You yes. have daughters. So was raising daughters a pain or a pleasure? Thank you. <laughs> it is. No, no, it is, it is a blazing, I must say. My first daughter, uh, we got married in 1989. My first daughter uh, was born in 1990, uh, April. She is now 31 and younger child is uh, Rajvi. And... Uh, she was born in uh, 1995. She's 27 to be 26 plus today. Both daughters are married? Yes, my elder daughter got married in 19, uh, 2015. 2015, And uh, younger one got married on 4 February 2020. And after her marriage, I was to travel to USA to your place. And this COVID-19 spoiled everything. Lockdown was on 22nd of uh, uh, March. Mm. So uh, I could not attend that uh, the event, uh, US Advisory Council uh, uh, souvenir release uh, event. It was very unfortunate for me. But we're happy to see you today virtually, you know, like you're meeting Mark, you're meeting Lee, Sherry, and eventually you'll come to the United States of America to meet your daughter. His daughter is married and she'll be coming to Detroit, Michigan. And I just want you to share a little bit on your daughters because you raised them like boys. When I say boys means, I'll say you raise them with freedom. See, freedom. Freedom is a very small word, but the same breath, very powerful. I've seen you that, I don't know, you. I want you to share yourself. How, how did you give so much freedom to your daughters? And they are so, they are like, I don't know, they're like angels, both their daughters, you know. They're very yes. respectful, very understanding. You know, and very cultured. They got a lot of character, value, education. How did you? How did this? How did you, as a couple? How did you raise them? See, having baby boy in India is blazing, according to others. I have two daughters. I'm very happy with them, and uh, I, I gave all freedoms. See, no time bar. What they should. Uh, my instruction was that you just let me know what time are you coming. I don't mind if you if you if you stay overnight to your friend's place. I I trust you. I don't mind. See, it, it is all. Say when when we have freedom, they should have freedom. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, like, grow, see, producing child is not a big thing, but growing them in a uh, in a good way is a big thing. And uh, for, for their education also, I, I didn't uh, bother much. They, they did uh, everything good on their own. And uh, see, freedom has to be given. If you don't, if you don't allow them to do whatever they like, they, they, they may go to, uh, to a wrong side, a wrong way. Mm -hmm. So my idea was to, to give them freedom. Freedom is uh, uh, they are going on the right track, then, then it's fine. But that's very good, and you are doing a wonderful job. You are a wonderful father, and uh, Sangeeta is a uh, is an amazing mother. And uh, God bless you. God bless your two daughters. And Thank you. And see you, I will we'll see you soon in the U.S. Coming down to Mark and uh, Rosanna. First of all, there is a complimentary question for you, uh, Neelam Sharma from Mumbai. What's your message for young couples? That's one, and then. Uh, there's uh, one more uh, thing. I think Purobi Roy has again come back and said that with each passing day, what is that makes you fall more in love with him or her? 
So Mark Kinman, I want if you can answer this and even if you can talk about your kids, about your son and daughters, like, you know, and I've seen them, uh, like I always say, a family that prays together, stays together, a family that eats together, stays together, a family that travels together, stays together, and a family that volunteers. By the way, friends, Mark Kinman and Rosanna Kinman, they volunteer a lot. They got their own foundation. I want you to share with all the audience today that, and especially here in the United States of America, who are in Ohio and Kentucky, how they can come to your idea. And during this pandemic, they can come and take groceries, not only people who are Americans and who are going through a bad phase, but including immigrants who have no status. Can they come and avail your benefits? Thank you. Yes. Okay. So that's a, a, a <laughs> lot of questions there. Uh, uh, you know, I would say to, to the young people today, um, you know, TV, social media, all of the things that are trying to show you what love is and what marriage is and these situation comedies on TV or these movies where um, problems or crisis arises and it's all solved in 20 minutes or 30 minutes outside of the commercials or whatever. That's just not real life. It, there, there takes a, a purpose. But I think the, the number one thing that, that people miss is the honoring of marriage. They treat it too loosely. It's not just a piece of paper. It's not just a contract. It's a covenant. It's a covenant that was designed by God. It is a picture of a relationship that God desires with us as, as his creation. But marriage is so, so important. And I think people discredit it and they dishonor it by just treating it so loosely. And I think that that's one thing I would speak to the young people is don't just try it out living together or things like that or play marriage. It's a commitment. And if everybody did that and valued it, they would see what God originally instituted. Because we were not made to live alone. God said it's not it's not good for man to be alone. That's why he, he gave us a help me, a help me. I mean, she helps me. We're very different. But I, I don't want. I mean, can you just imagine yourself, whoever you are out there listening or watching? Imagine a world, 7.6 billion people that were all just like you. If the world was exactly like me, I'd, I'd be out there rioting and revolting. <laughs> I, I'd be upset. You know, it's a good thing that we're different. Celebrate the differences. We're all different in this world. We need to celebrate those differences. It's very, very important. Uh, let's see. With regard to the uh, the children, we have um, two children. Well, she had them. I was there in the beginning. <laughs> she uh, she finished the, the deal. But our, our children, our uh, son is 24 years old and our daughter is 21 years old. We did not have children right away. You, you can tell them. Yeah, we waited eight and a half years before we had children. Um, Mark is very hardworking and really wanted to be in a house before we started trying to have children. And um, even that part, <laughs> Once we did get in a house and started trying, we were having difficulty. And so I prayed a prayer and I asked God to bless us with a child. And we both prayed and asked for a son first, um, mainly because we wanted him to take care of his sister when she came later. And God, God honored it and he blessed us where they told me I couldn't have children. God did a miracle and I was able to have two children. Um, before Kylie came after Colton, um, I did have a miscarriage, but I didn't let that stop me from trying again and letting God honor that. And one of the things we did is we homeschooled our children, which him working hard in the business and everything um, allowed me to homeschool them and teach them, you know, the things that they don't teach in schools, like honor and um how to respect you know your elders and things that god teaches us in his word and they just don't teach in schools anymore so they grew up learning everything of how to live god's way and how to save money how to spend money how to tithe and uh give money you know so they both are doing really, really well. They're both successful in their jobs and they have a great, you know, life. And, you know, 
they're I think what you're really talking about is is instilling values. Yeah. That's if right. I, one regret, I don't really have many regrets at all in life, but the only real regret I have is that we waited too long. <laughs> you know, I try to have everything perfect and, and everything just right. There is no right time you know, for, for kids and family and all that kind of thing. But I, I would have liked to have done it maybe three or four years earlier because children are such a, such a blessing. And I'll tell you what, this, this lady right next to me, she has everything to do with how wonderful our children are because she spent time with them. And but men, let me just this is we're, let's just stay on this subject of children right now, because it is so important. Children are our future. You've heard that, right? So, so important. This is why marriage is so important. This is why we're all here today. The family unit is so, so important. But men, you are so important in this marriage, especially those of you who have children. Why is that? Because we're shaping their lives. And I purpose, I've always purposed, I'm going to have a better marriage this year than I did last year. I was never going to tell my buddies or in the, in the world just, oh, I wish I never got married. I was never going to speak bad. Always going to speak positive words about my marriage. But let me say this over your children. Speak positive words over them. Encourage them. But show them. See, my daughter, I'm going to tell you this. She'll never be abused. Why? She won't accept it. Because she saw how I treated her mother. She will not accept anything less from a man. This is why it's so important, fathers, that you're involved and that you treat your wives so well because your daughters are watching. And guess what? Who else is watching? Your boys. Your boys are watching. See, my son, whoever gets my son, oh, she's golden. Because my wife, she won't even get out of the car unless I open the door for her. So chivalry is not dead, nor should it be. And I'm telling you, my son will treat his wife very well. We're, we're talking about all this abuse and all these kind of things. It's because we've got to raise our children correctly and teach them the values, the respect for women and their love. And my children, they'll be in trouble if they don't. But very powerful, uh, Mark and Rosanna Kidman. Jokes apart, I think you have spoken the Peter truth of the success of a happy married life. Not only that, but how to raise very happy kids you know happy kids when i say kids happy miss and uh, you you're done amazing job. i'll come back to you again uh, mark and uh, rosanna especially mark i wanted to share about the idea later on how people can avail the benefits but i'll come back to that but having said that i just like to read i'm getting a lot of uh, man compliments to all three couples of you that i'm getting a lot of compliments and i would like to read a couple of them before i go to the next question this is from uh, rachna sabarwal the credit goes to Sangeeta. She groomed her daughters very nicely. This indicates that she is fantastic mother. Uh, a good mother, I would say. So compliments to everybody. Sherry, I would say, Rosanna and Sangeeta. Then there is Kevin Patel. I just met Rakesh uncle just two, three times. But honestly saying, he is just like my father. When I meet him, I feel like I met my father. This is very powerful. And uh, Mark and Sherry and Lee, this boy's father is in the United States of America and is a victim of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put much, much light on this, but maybe whenever you pray, pray for this family, they are not met for, I don't know, more than 10 or 12 years. And Eyes Open International is working with them for his status, for his father's status. But I just wanted to, like, I don't want to get into the depth, but these words are very powerful. Rakesh Bhai, this is a big compliment for you. And I just wanted to read uh, something else also like uh, Loella Menezes from Mascaris from Pune. True, Rakesh, if you are too strict, kids will, will do things slyly. Or, you know, they'll do behind your back, you know. So, so uh, th that's it. Uh, but again, like, uh, I would like to come to Lee and uh, Sherry. I know I met you and I'm very touched with you. You are married for 46 years. You said, I said, when you said in the beginning of the show that you are broken, nobody says that. That really touches, I think, every man's heart or every girl's heart. But you never showed that. And after 19 years, I think when you said you're 40 years old, you shared that with your husband. Uh, number one, you had that courage. You had that trust. But most important, I always say, the mother who raises the child is bigger than the mother who gives birth to the child. 
so in such a case such a situation i know you went through the traumatic situation in your childhood i don't know what it is and i respect like you know your uh, your feelings emotions and sentiments uh, sherry at the same time you try to educate people but at the same time uh, we all mark rosana rakesh sangeeta myself lee we salute you i literally salute you from my heart you are a god for me that you accepted this with grace and blessings and you are you got more closer and i want to share that how you i want you to share how did you accept this or not i don't i don't have the proper words i want you to share it with the audience thank you it's a big subject <laughs> it's hard to know where to start but the thing that that made me want to hold that a secret was because i knew that my husband wanted a virgin mm -hmm. and that had been stolen from me as a child mm -hmm. So my anger sometimes is directed at him which I had to deal with but that is the point that I had to come into alignment with God and accept even though that had been stolen from me that was not my identity I was still who God created me to be inside and nothing that ever happens to us mm -hmm. ever changes the identity who god created us with and when i came into the alignment with that thought that is when i became kintsugi and it took me a lifetime it took me all my life to bring this into alignment but i tell you it's forgiveness and commitment to each other that is what held us together because every night we would ask forgiveness for the things that um, may have transpired that were not very nice between us and we always said i love you mm -hmm. and for those who are wondering how do you keep your marriage together it is committing and choosing every single day every moment of that day i will love this person because i have committed i am going i my commitment to stay married until death us do part no matter what and that is what kept us and is still keeping us i still choose every day to love my husband and probably when we're 80 and 90 and 100 years old i'll still be choosing to love my husband because i don't want anybody else freedom is a choice and it's giving, not, it's not 50-50. A marriage is not 50-50. It's 100%, 100%. I give to her 100%, she gives to me. And as I value her more, I like what Mark said and Rakesh. Well, when we give ourselves to our wife and truly value her as a special vessel, uh, it, just, it just takes away our pride. It takes away our egotism we don't really have to prove anything as a, as a husband or, or a man it's just a joy to give myself to sherry and give a hundred percent to her and that gives her value and that helps her to grow and be the creative woman that she was designed to be and until he gives of himself 100 percent to me i can't be that creative woman and as, as many were talking about how our, our marriage is, we started with almost zero mm -hmm. for money. And you guys lived on macaroni. We lived on beans. <laughs> <laughs> I, I learned how to make beans a hundred million one ways. But you know, it's, it's, it's like those little things that seem so unimportant mm -hmm. within a woman, God has created every woman to create abundance. And if you, if a man will, if a man holds a woman in this little uh, prison, he doesn't set her free. But when he sets her free to be her creative self, all he gives, he has abundance in him. God, like created, God created every woman with a creative something within us to create abundance, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. 
it's very very powerful it makes a lot of sense that's we always talk about uh, caring and not controlling and i think here is a living example but uh, lee with due respect i know it's very emotional but if you are comfortable i want to share your sentiments that when she shared about what happened to her after 20 years how did you receive it how did you accept it how did you acknowledge it and how did you forgive forget and you all got closer like i want you to share with our couples or people across the world because when it times this type of situation breaks is stop bringing them together if you are willing to share i'm okay if you are not willing to share also we will move ahead but i, I but i would uh, respect if you can share what was going on in your mind and how did you like like it's a huge challenge for everybody including me for a, for a guy like you know if you are married so please thank you i think at the beginning i hid my emotions uh when we were married because of our faith it is till death do us part and so overarching everything is a, a vow a promise i made to her whether it was in you know in good times and bad times i would still love her i think what made it more painful to me was because of her background because um of her family background which i uh had chosen and but i also had put faith in that that family background uh her siblings were my friends so all of this that came out almost 20 years later after we were married really was devastating to me and i what when i say i didn't process it correctly i wasn't allowing us to really after I, i understood it i really didn't allow us to talk about it i didn't allow her to to really take me deeper and just simply for me to say to her tell me more it was rather this is very painful for you it's very painful for me i do forgive you and i i will trust you but if you don't go deep in your own self in, in in realizing how you are processing this very painful thing you'll find resentment down deep 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 <laughs> get my finger uh you'll find resentment and that resentment can be so subtle if you don't really process it if you don't really allow yourself to be able to talk to your spouse about what happened and then <clears throat> what begins is this this kind of this i don't i don't know how to explain it it begins this leveraging well she's broken and i didn't go through that therefore uh i don't i don't really need to value her like i should and you don't put that in words but if you don't deal process this in your heart you'll begin to subtly say things do things that will cause her a lot of hurt and i did so we found that even after she began to write her book began to really give voice i realized deep within i needed to say you know this is not this is this is very painful but i do forgive you and i accept the value that god has given to you you are of utmost valuable to god and i honor that and i give you my virtue god has given his virtue to her and nobody can steal it she says my identity nobody can take away and that's true and i want to enhance that every day but make sure if some traumatic thing comes up of the past that you're unaware of yes i thought i had a virgin to marry that was the ideal that was my hope my prayer that's what we talked about but it was so deeply hidden in her psyche 
that she honest, she told me the truth. She thought she was a virgin, but she was not. And you know, I was. Yes, you were. You're right. If it's stolen, that's right. I didn't give it away. That's right. You were. But even trauma cannot destroy a marriage. And I totally agree with Mark. Every year is going to be a better year for us. And we're just looking forward to many years ahead because this is a joy to embrace the other partner and all of her virtue and all of her gold. She's gold. Lee, you're platinum. And all I can say today is that I got so emotional listening to you that I think just listening to these three couples, I think there is no need for anyone to go for counseling. What is counseling? I mean, this is real, practical. What you have gone through in life, you said trauma and coming out of it. Man, I, I don't know, Ian's just saluting you or any words, it's, it's very small. But once again, God bless you. You are an inspiration. I just want to read some uh, delegates who have uh, written this from India, Kishore Parekh. Really the secret of success story of happy married life of Lee and Sherry is just unbelievable. Great support to each other. The world is complimenting you. Thank you. So, you know, like uh, uh, Chetna Shresti from Nepal. This is profound Lee. So well summed up. Was that a book you mentioned? Is there a book? I think you had a book. Do you have it? So can you tell us something? Where can the audience get the book from? You can order on Amazon. Okay, Amazon. Amazon has this um, echoing silence from the child within. And this is the picture of me at three years old. And that is when the trauma is started. That your picture? Is that you? That is me. Oh, that's you. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. You yes, so, and you, you silence from the child within. Mm -hmm. And wow. it is a story not about what happened. It is a story about God's transformation and how he takes the broken and makes Kintsugi. <laughs> that's my story. Wow. So that's good. Then uh, I just want to read one more uh, uh, compliments. That's from Kishore Parekh. Rakesh Bhai, the success of your children is all because you got the wife who understands you as well as her role to become a caring mother. <laughs> so that goes to you. But I'll come back to uh, Mark. Uh, friends, this is something very important. If you've got a paper and pen, please note it. And Mark, I wanted to share this in a little bit detail of your ICM ministry, especially during this pandemic. Because there are so many couples, I think you could bridge, they're going through this, uh, they don't have food in the house. Because I do run groceries for a lot of immigrants and in uh, vulnerable population. Please can you share where people can come out, reach, what you do. And it's a God's blessing what you're doing and you're doing it for so many years. And like, can you share that anybody can walk in, whether you're an American or, or any human being. I wanted to share a little bit in detail, please. Thank you. Well, yeah, we have a, a, a ministry. It's called the Isaiah House Ministries, and it's it's really a, it's a food ministry. But the food is is really just a tool. You know, everybody needs food, no matter what. You know, we struggled in our first years of our marriage, and you know, we we knew what we were going to be eating for dinner that night. Now we open up the refrigerator, the cupboards, and we're like, hmm, what do we want to eat? Well, not everybody has that privilege, and there's a, a number of people, especially during the pandemic going on more than a year now, uh, they didn't have that option. And a lot of their options where they would go get food was shut down and closed. So we run a ministry that we, we buy food, uh, some of it's donated, and then we just give it away. And the reason I say it's a tool, because it's, it's just that, that sustenance that we can give to somebody and show them love. We're really there just to love on people and encourage them and show them that we're there for help. We teach them about God and how God loves them, and we, we pray with them, and we've seen many, many, many things. But the food becomes like an open door, like a trust. So we, we call it Isaiah House Ministries, and we're in, in uh, Covington, Kentucky, and Ludlow, Kentucky, distributing to hundreds of families. We give each family uh, about a week's worth of food. And uh, you can contact us at Faith Church Incorporated 
were at 3830 Narrows Road in Erlanger, Kentucky, 41018. You can email me, Pastor Mark, at myfaithchurch.com. We have a website, isaiah-house.com. And it's, it's just a wonderful ministry. The, the food is, yes, that's what draws people there. But very, very quickly, when people are there, they realize whether you're volunteering or you're there to receive, the food is just part of it. It's really the party. It's really like you, you have a dinner. The purpose is, yes, we're all going to eat. But the purpose is the fellowship and the love and the friendship. And we just welcome everybody. I don't care where they come from, who they are. We have people that uh, have showed up and, and they're, they have money. And but they they lost a job or their spouse lost a job and they're just in need for just a short period of time. We don't judge anybody. We have people that are immigrants, whether they're documented or undocumented. Everybody needs food and we're all the human race and we love each other and we honor God by really just reaching out to our, our neighbor. And uh, you know, God said uh, the greatest commandment. I can relate this to marriage also. God said the greatest commandment commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your soul, heart, mind, and spirit. And Jesus said the second greatest commandment is like the first, love your neighbor as yourself. So I think we've got to realize that our, our spouse is our neighbor. And if you really want a real good goal, there's a lot of ways you can, you can make it in marriage. But I'll tell you the number one way is to just, if we put God first, and if I want to uh, obey the commandments and be more like God and, and love him and love others, I'll do better in my marriage. If you can kind of think of like a like a triangle, <laughs> it's hard to do that on screen. Like you're here. Sorry. You're here and she's there. And I just have a goal to get closer to God. Uh, and she has a goal to get closer to God. Well, the closer you get to God, guess how what you get closer together. So I think it's important that if you kind of have that common goal, we're going to love God and we're going to love our neighbor. Our neighbor is ourselves yeah. or others. Yes. We, we help our marriages too. And we, we teach a lot of things in the Isaiah House ministry, but we're really there to just give out the food. And then that opens the door to say, hey, how are you doing? Is everything OK? I, I, we have hundreds, hundreds of volunteers and hundreds of families. And I really make it a purpose. And we're doing things differently because of COVID. We're packing off site and we're bringing it and putting it in front of their cars. But I, I go by all the cars and I say, how are you doing? How is your families? Is there anything that we can pray with you about? What's going on? And sometimes you get some of their story because there needs to be trust. You know, when I met Harold, he was he was serving. He said, people need to know about this ministry. Now, at the time, I didn't know what would had happened in his life and why the, the ministry like this is so important, because people need to know who to trust. And there was a, a lot of wonderful people that reached out to Harold and, and Dancy with some sustenance. And the more you do that, the more trust you build with people. And I think that's why the ministry is so, so important. Mark, can you share with the audience, like if people are, who are in Cincinnati right now watching in Hawaii or in Kentucky, when, where can they come? It's on the last Saturday. Can you share all those details where they can yeah, come? What we try to do is... Uh, or you just uh, give the food. Yeah, we try to leverage all of our volunteer help because no one is paid. Uh, actually, our volunteers pay. They, they donate money. We buy the stuff. We give it away. But if anybody wants or needs help, we try to leverage our time and do it the last Saturday of every month. And if you're in the Cincinnati tri-state area, Kentucky, Ohio, or Indiana, you can come to the St. Elizabeth Hospital parking lot in Covington, Kentucky on James Simpson Boulevard, the very last Saturday of every month. We've never, ever missed in years and years and years. I don't care what the weather is. We're out there, semi-trucks, forklifts. We're loading up people with food. And then also in Ludlow at the Ludlow Vets there on Route 8. If you'd like to contact us and maybe set up an appointment, you can come here to the church. We've got food here at the church at 3830 Narrows Road, Erlanger, Kentucky, 41018. You can give us a call, 859-491-2850. You can email me, Pastor Mark, at myfaithchurch.com. If you're hungry, there's really no need. We've got food, and we don't judge anybody. I don't care if you show up here in a BMW. We're going to give you some food. I love that. And what time on Saturday can they come? Uh, they can come as early as 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, and we're there. We're there at 6.30 in the morning. We're setting up, and uh, we're, we've... Like I said, during all during COVID, I told all of our volunteers, if anybody asks if we're doing it, you're an essential worker and we're going to be there. So we've, we've never missed. And God yes. is faithful. 
yeah thank you very much uh, mark and uh, rosana kinme the entire family is there his son is there his daughter is there and friends if you are in need food you can come there but even if you do not need food but you would like to volunteer we need volunteers there at isia on the last saturday please show up in the morning 7 o'clock or early and uh, you will really enjoy it my family has done it we we'll love it and we we'll love you mark and rosana for what you do god bless you but uh, moving next i just want to read some comments uh, from chetna shristi from nepal inspiring indeed mark and rosena gratitude and this is uh, uh, vimal satyal secret of lo long happy marriage ask not what your wife can do for you ask what you can do for your wife best wishes from australia married for 50 more years good <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so we we have uh, a lot of comments over here but i would i would like to move on to the next uh, question or the next thing we would like to know audience that we are uh, what were the most struggling times in your life i know each and every one has gone because uh, people think that oh married life maybe for mark and rosanna was a cake walk the runway was very smooth or you know like so i think the runway for each and every married couple is the same whether you are married in a royal family you are married on with a pauper i think you know the 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 path is the same so there are portals there are bumpers there is vibration there is cyclo there is everything so i think in your all three couples life it was the same but what made you still stick together and love you look like you are just married like for you the the moment i look at you i meet you out anywhere like i meet mark he so there's so much positive energy like you know I, i feel so like i feel energized i meet rakesh bhai his wife i go to his house like they're all bubbly it's like they just got married today <laughs> and same with uh, lee and sherry so what is that was the rough phase also in your life i don't know who wants to start first and how did you all like handle it how did you all handle it collectively and there are a lot of questions people ask me that like how did you all like how did you all uh, go through all this stuff mm -hmm. Uh, okay uh, i'll just start yes. i think you know what everybody wants the secret what's the secret you know and here we've got our our panel here we've got some varying uh marriages both in time and and perhaps culture we've got uh some strong women here we've got superwoman over there sanjita who raised a couple of awesome daughters and we've got all these people listening in and everybody wants to know the secret and every marriage is different you know what we did in our marriage may not be what somebody else needs to do and everybody wants that one secret what is the one thing i need to do and it's it's not any one particular thing it's it's commitment it's realizing that that love is not something that you feel in demand from your your spouse it's something that you do you know if 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 my relationship is dependent on how she has to make me feel if i'm dependent on how she has to make me happy then we're going to have struggles we're going to have some some hard times and we have had some hard times it's not been a cake walk there's been some financial struggles at times and and i just thought wow we're done that that's it business is over i don't know what we're going to do and we're praying to god there were struggles in ministry times like man i can't seem to get past you know these people who have hurt me and there's been some really pressures in time but the the secret is none of us all arrived here whoever's listening or wherever you're listening we all didn't just arrive here with perfection or arrive here with success for us it's been 30 over 32 years of day to day success you know people the, the back to the ministry people show up and they say wow like it was happened overnight it's like I've been doing this for 32 years. We started with 12 bags of groceries. I was a kid. I was a teenager. But you know what? We just never stopped. It looks like this huge 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 success, but the secret is we just didn't stop. We just kept going no matter mm -hmm. what. And I don't care who you are and some of you've got maybe some more difficult challenges than what we had and some stresses and and some trauma, but you're not your past. tomorrow is your future you you're not going to add a, a single day worrying about tomorrow or trying to relive the past or or try to escape the past just keep going i would also say communication is the key when you guys right. communicating then 
that's when your marriage stops because he doesn't know what you're thinking and vice versa. So you have to communicate. You have to say, you know, this really didn't make me feel good when you did that or said that and give him an opportunity to ask for forgiveness, you know, because that's the key communication. Yeah. That's very good. That's very powerful communication. Yeah. Rakesh Bhai, because we have just uh, 15 minutes left. Respecting the time. What goes, what goes around comes around. Mm -hmm. If you give respect, you get respect. Mm -hmm. And you never know how hard someone was, someone's job is until you do it yourself. My wife is a homemaker. She, uh, when she gets up, she prepares a good cup of tea for me and then breakfast and then my lunch and then uh, household work and caring for children where, when they were young, looking for their schools, uh, looking for their studies and what, what I was doing. I was earning money. That was my work. But be, becoming a homemaker, a homemaker is a very difficult job. Mm -hmm. So I respect her, what, what she did for me. Without her, it could not have been made possible for me. This is, this is, yeah. and, and, and I, I don't mind doing my household work also. On Sundays, I am there with her. We do dusting, we, do, we, we clean our house, uh, I do mopping also, and, and we, are, we are happy with that. So, so as a pandemic, what took you closer? Yes, definitely. We, see, see, very interesting, I'll tell you one thing. My elder daughter was in uh, Indore. Indore is in Madhya Pradesh, uh, my, uh, India, my MP. So my my elder daughter was in Indore. She got married in Indore. My wife and my, my younger daughter, Rajvi, went to Indore for a couple of days. My wife came back to Vadodara and Rajvi, my younger daughter, Rajvi, said, Mama, I will stay there for, for three, three, four more days. And she was stuck up there due to lockdown. So fortunate parties, my wife and I were all alone in the home for 45 days. She could not come from Indore. So uh, it was a wonderful time of my life, I must tell you. Uh, in, 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 hum, in, in Hindi, uh, there is a say, hum saath hai, to phir fikr kis baat ki. When we are together, nothing to worry. So that's that, part that, of the uh, pandemic. That you should enjoy yes. your family time. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think it's a God's blessing that God is telling you, okay, come on. I'm giving you family time. Up till now, you used to go to work here. And mm -hmm. yes. that's very that's very powerful, Ramesh Bhai and Sangeeta. Yes, yes. Because because 45 days we were together. We uh, we were we were looking at each other a uh, uh, whole day. And that was a wonderful time. That was our honeymoon, I must say. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you very much, Rakesh and Sagida. Yeah, Lee and Sherry, you'd like to add anything, like anything of your uh, journey, of your struggle? I know there's a lot of things very inspiring, but anything you'd like to uh, share with their, uh, with their audience globally? Go ahead. Like, I think you were in Guatemala. I think you were many parts of your years. In. Can you share that about your journey in some other country? Yeah, that was a really uh, amazing time in our life because uh, I didn't know what the kind of uh, we went to language school in Costa Rica and we became pregnant there and I was headed for Guatemala. I didn't know what kind of a situation I'd be in. I didn't know if I'd be in a hospital. I didn't know what doctor I'd have. And our, our baby was born a month early and it was uh, there was a hospital, a Catholic hospital that saved our baby's life. There was a nun who absolutely refused to leave that hospital. She took care of our baby 24 seven. And it was just an incredible time of our life. It was a very hard time of our life. Mm -hmm. But all these situations that God takes you through, you look back on it and you say, well, it wasn't really all that bad because every moment of those days, we were focused on each other loving each other and we were focusing on being grateful for what we had mm -hmm. at the moment and the gratitude i believe takes us through the hard times of life when we don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. and it was in those times when 
as a couple, we drew closer together because we had nobody else. We didn't hardly know how to speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we made lots of mistakes and people probably laughed at us for trying to say something. <laughs> we did. We said the wrong words. But, you know, in a hospital, when you are facing your baby dying, it's amazing how those people who couldn't speak very much English and how we couldn't speak very much Spanish. That was probably one of my worst moments, but love is the language around the world. Yes. And those people were praying for us and we knew that they were caring for our child and we had to trust. And I think that's how God brings people groups together and we all become one. We are together in this life. And the way that you are working, Harold, with all these different people and bringing us all together, mm -hmm. I believe it's God's great blessings upon every nation around the world to understand that he cares about us all. And no matter where we're at in our marriages, no matter where we are in our families, it is that, that love that brings us together and aligns us together. And that's where I'm going to stop with this because I believe that uh, my husband can add where he wants. Well, I like the theme of this uh, podcast, Harold, that uh, wedding is happiness, marriage is freedom choice. and uh, freedom of choice. And I choose, I choose today. Uh, sometimes the emotions aren't there. <laughs> Honestly, they're not there. But the, well, I can will to do it. I can choose to do it. I can choose to love my wife. I can choose to love my neighbor, whether that's the one across the wall from me or the one that's, you know, across the fence or the one that's, you know, 5,000 miles away uh, in another country. I choose. And, uh, and choice is a freedom. Freedom is a choice. And I'm thankful for that freedom today in my own heart. I choose to love Sherry. I choose to forgive. I, I choose to see my neighbor as one who is in need. And we think, we feel, we choose. It's, uh, it works. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sherry and Lee. But I'll just, uh, we have just uh, uh, seven minutes. Uh, but I want to read some uh, compliments from Jigar Shah. You both always share your wisdom, time, <coughs> advice, and love. Thank you. Uh, this is from uh, Deepak Soni from India. It is very inspiring to hear all these couples talk about how they are standing stronger than before, despite all odds. Thank you all for sharing your inspiration. So thanks, uh, each one of you. Uh, Purobi Roy uh, Dave. Mark, you have explained the love triangle. Awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, and I think that's very good. The way you said it, the, the closer you come, the bonding is very good. So there are a lot of comments from the delegates from Nigeria, I think Nepal, uh, Pakistan. Uh, we have six minutes. Uh, uh, I think, Rile, can you put in uh, Rakesh also? I don't know. Is he waiting? Uh, can you get him in? But I just want each one of you to share one thing for our audience who are married or not married, maybe you can talk on different subjects, but maybe you had some, uh, you had a lot of frictions in your life, which I know you, you always said, how did you, I don't know what you want to share. Uh, anything, uh, whether it is how you change negativity into positivity, one message uh, you'd like to sh share each one of you to our audience. We have six minutes. So maybe each one can take two minutes. Thank you. Yes, Mark, we'll begin with you and uh, Rosanna. Okay, well, I think one of the things uh, Rosanna talked about earlier was communication, and that's so important. You've got to be able to keep that communication open, and you have to provide a safe place for your spouse to come to about anything. And you, that's one of the things, you know, and she has to provide that safe place for me. I should be able to communicate with her about anything. No, no subject should be like, well, we don't talk about that. We don't go there. We need to purpose to provide a safe place to communicate whatever it is to one another. That's how that's how Lee and Sherry got past their barrier. That's how we've gotten past our barriers. 
And I think sometimes when you're in a disagreement or you, you face a, a tough situation, you, you communicate, you talk it out, you, you purpose to come to an agreement, but then also speak the right words because words are seeds. You know, Rakesh was just said, uh, what goes around comes around. And that's a popular saying, but I think it's stronger than that. God made it stronger than that. Everything we know in life begins with a seed. And there, and there becomes, there's a little bit of time, you know, nothing is instant, but there's the harvest always comes, but the harvest is always greater than the seed. So sometimes what goes around, what is planted comes back even bigger. And what I want to make sure is that I'm planting the right seeds so that I get the right harvest because seeds turn into time and turn into a harvest. And the harvest is always greater than the seed. So if I speak the right words and I do the right things and sow them as seeds, I get the right harvest. But I'm always telling people, make sure you know what you're planting today because you don't want to be planting something that turns out to be a weed or a thorn or something later that's going to hinder your marriage. Never, Plant never use the word divorce or separation. Always think unity. Yeah, always be thankful. Um, as uh, you know, Lee and Sherry were talking about in the exemplifying gratitude. Just always be thankful and gratitude. Sow the right seeds so that the right harvest comes around. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mark and uh, Rosanna. Like you said about communication, using the right words. Uh, what is one uh, message, uh, uh, Rakesh, by you would like to give to our audience about happy married life? Just mute, unmute yourself. You're on mute. Uh, what to say? I don't understand. I'm not able to say anything. But to live happy, you have to make your partner happy. That's Try to right. understand each other. Try to understand each other's value. That is a that is the best best way to be happy in in happily married life. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Rakesh. One, and... one more thing I would like. One more thing I sure. would like to thank Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Kevin Patel, Kishore Parikh. Rachna Sabarwal, Loyala, and uh, all my EOI friends uh, across the, the world. That is uh, respectable Bukola Oriola uh, from Texas. I, I, I'm highly inspired. She is a wonderful woman. I'm eager to meet her also. And uh, uh, Stacy Simon uh, in USA. Uh, uh, she has taken almost. She is a journalist, and she has taken interviews of all prime ministers uh, of the world, almost. And uh, Katya Diamond, uh, uh, renowned choreographer in California. So these are all my my, my, my friends and uh, uh, Facebook friends and uh, relatives and uh, my son-in-law in Detroit. I'm, I, I want to thank every everyone who has liked me and uh, commented on my this talk show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Rakesh and Sangeeta. So, Lee and Sherry, you have one minute. I'm sorry, but what is that you would like to share with our audience? Thank you. One thing I would like to share with the audience is guard your mind. You are the guardian of your mind. If my wife is the only woman that I allow into my mind, into my thoughts, into in my world of dreaming, uh, that's the only one that goes there. She's the only one that's placed there. So guard your mind. You have the freedom to guard your mind and keep a commitment until death do us part. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so in the end, friends, I would like to thank uh, Manan Rawal, who is the founder of Bharat FM. And once again, I'd like to, I'd like to thank uh, Mark and Rosanna Kinman, Rakesh and uh, Sangeeta Shah, Lee and Sherry Rickenback for joining this uh, event today, sparing a variable time and giving the wealth of wisdom to all people. And I think you all have inspired me. I learned so much today from each one of you. And I always say that I'm a student of life. I am not a perfect husband. I always say that I'm a failure. It is my wife who made me. She's the backbone of my success. And I always say, it's a, it's a fact that many times the ladies or the wife, they do not take the credit. The credit goes to the guys. But uh, yeah, I would like to proudly uh, proclaim loud and clear that it is Dancy D'Souza who made my life change from pain to pleasure. And you all couples have played a very big role in my personal life. So thank you very much. Uh, God bless all the couples in the world. Happy married life. Thanks for joining.
Vande Mataram. I'll just play the jingle. And uh, once again, thank you. Just stay tuned. This is Bharat FM. Bajega Bharat, Jumega Bharat. ये है भारत एफ एम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत हृदय One second, I'm just trying to. I think we'll clock back in. Just give me. Well, just you can just clock back in. If I'm audible, uh, uh, I, I, I thank uh, Mr. Lee and Shari, Mark and Rosanna to be with me on this wonderful event. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Namaste. Jai Hind. Jai Hind. <laughs> it's been our privilege as well to meet you for the first time. We hope it's not the last time. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. also to be with that. Mark and Rosanna again. Yes. Yeah, we're we're really uh, honored to be, you know, part of this panel with you guys and Rakesh and Sanjita. Just a real real joy to hear a little bit about your life. And we're looking forward to meeting you here in the states. Yes. Uh, yes. I know it's evening time there, so um, I, I guess you're getting re getting ready for for bed pretty soon here, but. Uh, Thank you guys so much for your inspiration and Lee and Sherry, just been a, a pleasure meeting you guys in recent weeks. And uh, I, I just believe God puts us all together for a reason. Yes, he does. does. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And when you and when you, when you all come to the United States, my house, our house is your house. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you so very much. We, 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 and we, will, uh, we will have a good time in America. Yes, mm -hmm. we have one problem here though. One problem here though. We don't have good tea like you have there. You are listening to Bharat FM, a one of its kind, multilingual, eclectic provider of entertainment, information, and news to Indian Americans. Headquartered in Cincinnati, Ohio, Bharat FM airs shows out of Cincinnati, Chicago, and Phoenix. We take pleasure in our ability to cater to your bhakti, chusti, sphurti, shakti and masti needs with our audio and visual shows. Check out bharatfm.com for our online program schedule and archives. I'm sure the content will definitely tickle your senses. Tune in via the 24-hour web streaming on bharatfm.com or via the Bharat FM app. More information can be procured at 513-488-5070. This is Bharat FM. Bajega Bharat, Jumega Bharat. Yeh hai Bharat FM. Bajega Bharat, Jumega Bharat.